How's it going? And welcome back to another video. So finally, after far too long, I have gotten around to making this video, and this is the Sigma 16mm f1.4 versus the Rokinon 12mm f2. Um, I put out a little poll far too long ago about which lens you guys wanted to see me compare this Sigma to, and this one was overwhelmingly the winner. So that's the one we're going to start with. So these two lenses are very similar, yet very different in several ways. First of all, we've got 16 millimeters and 12 millimeters, which sounds like four millimeters. It's not that much. But when you consider that it is a 25% change going from 16 down to 12, the difference in the field of view is quite significant. And we'll take a closer look at the field of view a little bit later when we look at some of the comparison images. Next up is the size. These lenses are the exact same diameter they use the exact same filter thread size. I can actually take the lens caps and switch them around. When it comes to the weight, the Rokinon is eight ounces or about 250 grams, and the Sigma is 14 ounces or about 400 grams. So while this is almost twice as heavy as this one, it, there, you, can't, you almost can't tell that in the hand. This is a pretty hefty little lens, even though it is tiny. But you do notice it a lot when it's on the camera, and that is partially because a lot of the weight is out further, so you've got more leverage pulling that lens down. So the Rokinon feels substantially smaller when it's actually mounted up on a camera. So the close focus for these two lenses is nine inches on the 16 millimeter and seven inches on the 12 millimeter. Um, and because that is from the sensor plane, you can pretty much come within just a couple inches of your subject from the end of the lens. Even though this one focuses closer, you're gonna get more magnification with this because of your extra focal length there. So with the build quality, these two are kind of a blend of high quality and budget parts. The Rokinon definitely showing more of a budget oriented build. Um, pretty much everything on this lens is plastic except for the mount on the back. The mount is metal, the lenses are obviously glass, and everything else is plastic. So this one definitely feels cheaper than the Sigma, which has got a fair bit of aluminum in the build. The whole focus ring assembly is aluminum. It does have a metal mount on the back, but it does have plastic filter threads and a little bit of plastic down here towards the base as well. So the Sigma definitely comes out on top as far as the feel and the build quality goes, but neither of them feel like a piece of junk. The Rokinon is manual focus only and it takes quite a bit of force to get it to turn it's not the smoothest lens I've ever dealt with. Whereas the Sigma, you can pretty much just touch with your fingertip and get it to roll. So if you are manual focusing on a gimbal, this one is going to be much easier to deal with than having to really clamp onto this and try and turn it. So you're gonna get less gimbal interference when you're manual focusing with the 16 millimeter versus the 12. So the real draw with both of these lenses is gonna be the big aperture. This one is an f1.4 and this is an f2.0. Both of them can capture tons of light, but there's actually one full stop of difference between these two lenses. So if you're shooting pictures or videos in a limited light situation, this one is actually gonna capture twice as much light as the F2.0 here. And here's a quick video comparison of them shooting in a very dim room. It wasn't completely dark, but it was dim. Shooting video at 24 frames a second with a shutter speed of 1 50th. You can see that the Sigma gathers a lot more light and it's gonna give you a lot more flexibility with shooting in lower light even or taking pictures in dimmer situations as well. Now, I know everybody really wants to see a astrophotography comparison between these two lenses, and I wanna do that comparison so badly, but I don't wanna go outside and shoot the clouds in a light polluted city. It's just not worth it to try and do it before I can make it happen well. I wanna go out into the countryside on a clear night when the moon's not out and try and take some awesome star pictures, maybe get the Milky Way in there and give you something worth looking at because if you've ever tried astrophotography, lots of things have to fall into place for your pictures to really turn out. So it is coming one day soon. So now that we've pretty much covered everything outside of the actual image quality, let's go ahead and jump in and check that stuff out. Let's go ahead and start with the barrel distortion. These are some wider angle lenses and you will have some distortion. So we've got the 16 millimeter here in green and the Rokinon is gonna be red. <clears throat> so what you need to look at here is this very top line. That was kind of the reference point I used when I shot these images. And the top line almost doesn't move at all. 
it just stays in its exact same place. So the barrel distortion between these two lenses is extremely similar and it can be corrected in post easily. There's not really a problem with the barrel distortion. It's a super wide angle lens. You're never gonna see it. It's got a weird wide angle look anyways. It's not gonna be an issue. Moving down to vignetting, as you can see between the Rokinons F2 and F2.8, there is a gigantic jump in the corner brightness. The vignetting is pretty heavy on this lens, wide open, but stopping down does help, but that doesn't really help if you really want that brighter aperture. And then moving down to F11, there's not as much of a change, but you can see that my sensor is quite dirty. Now for the 16 millimeter. Before we look at the 16 millimeter, both of these shots were shot within two minutes of each other, and there's a huge difference in the color profile that it creates. I don't know what what changes there, what's different in the glass, but it is pretty significant. I don't know, I haven't really looked hard at the colors that each of them produce in each picture that I took side by side, but uh, I just thought that was interesting that that one, it looks so gray and the other one looks so vibrant and blue. So for the vignetting on the Sigma, it's not as pronounced. This is going from F 1.4 to F 2 and it gets a little better, a little brighter and up from there to F 5.6 and F 11. So as you can see, my sensor is filthy again, and it gets a little better up to f5.6, and then after that, it pretty much stays the same. But as far as wide open vignetting goes, the Sigma has got less vignetting than the Rokinon, and that's probably one of my biggest complaints with astrophotography with the Rokinon is correcting the corners, because especially if you're trying to stitch it together, you've got a really bright center, really dark corners, and if you try and stitch them together, it creates a huge headache with trying to get it to look like a single image. So now let's take a look at the field of view. You can see here I was looking straight down the street, and while I can get all the buildings in it with the Rokinon, I am losing the top of one building in this with the Sigma, and also there's a pretty significant difference in the width that I can capture there. So that 25% extra field of view is really being shown well here in the amount of buildings that you get to see in both width and height. But the field of view doesn't only change how much you can actually see, well it does, but it really adds a different feel to the images that you get. So this is a quick shot. Tripod was in the exact same position. I focused right here at this coupling. You can see how much more of the bridge and the cabling is captured in the Rokinon. It adds more to look at in the picture. It kind of gives you a totally different feel, whereas the Sigma, you're pretty much focused dead on the, the coupling and you're not looking at anything else because it's not there's nothing else fully in the image because you're stuck looking at what's in focus. Where the Rokinon, you see what's in focus, you see what's behind it, you see a lot of the context of what you're looking at. So the Rokinon can add additional interest with its extra wide field of view. Here's another couple shots just to show you just the field of view, not so much artsy looking, but we have got the Sigma here and we back out to the Rokinon there. Here's another one with the Sigma over here, the Rokinon here, you can see, this is an example of something where you can see more in the image, but it doesn't really add anything to it. I prefer the Sigma in this picture because with the Rokinon, you're just getting more blank brick walls and more boring ceiling in there. The Sigma really focuses you in on the windows and what is cool about this building. So it uh, really just depends on how you use these tools. And that's all lenses really are, are tools. And it doesn't matter how sharp they are, how soft they are, the kind of bokeh they've got. You can take any of that stuff and use it to your advantage, or it can take advantage of you. All right, speaking of sharpness and image quality, let's go ahead and check these two lenses out side by side. Exact same images, exact same focus points. I focused right on these trees out here in the middle of the image, and the, uh, the results may surprise you a little bit. We've got the Sigma on the right and the Rokinon on the left, and in the dead center, you, you're going to want to say that the, uh, the Rokinon is definitely sharper, and it does definitely look sharper. But when we venture off into the corners here, the image quality in the Rokinon really falls to pieces. And while the Sigma isn't very good, um, it is better than the Rokinon. There's a lot less chromatic aberration. If we jump in here and take a look at this crazy green and purple fringing, looking at the Sigma, there's pretty much no fringing anywhere to be seen up in he these corners. So that is a big plus for the Sigma in the corners, but a plus for the Rokinon in the center. 
there's definitely there's definitely a difference there and the Rokinon definitely looks sharper in the center which is a surprise because the Sigma is unbelievably sharp but that was at f1.4 with the Sigma so let's move it down to f2 so it's mono eh, it's even so with the Sigma stop down to f2 you can see that the sharpness gap has pretty much completely closed in the center so the Sigma seems to be catching up quite quickly here and uh, so let's go check out those corners that were so so stinking bad on the Rokinon. Uh, you can see that the Sigma might have moved up just a touch. It still doesn't seem as sharp, but there's not as many chromatic aberrations and other defects of that sort in the corners. So moving on to F4 with both lenses, you can see that the Rokinon is really holding its own here, even when we stop down. So the Sigma and the Rokinon in the center stop down seem to be absolutely neck and neck as far as sharpness goes. I don't see any chromatic aberration or fringing on either one of them in the center, but that can always change when we move over to these corners here. So the Sigma definitely sharpens up more in the corners. The Rokinon might have sharpened up. It's really hard to tell because there is so much green and purple smearing everywhere. It's really hard to tell because that those aberrations are just so bad. Moving to the other side, the Sigma looks nice and sharp-ish. The Rokinon looks fairly sharp over here, but again, that green and purple stuff is really, really killing it for me. On to F8, the center is absolutely as sharp as any lens can ever get. It's just it's just perfect in the center on both lenses. Uh, the real conversation here is the corners. And um, they look better. Let's jump in a little bit more. Very sharp on both lenses. The Rokinon still got the aberrations. Uh, the Sigma looks very good. Let me move back out to one to one. I know you guys are probably watching on cell phones, which are this big. It's kind of tough to see. But both lenses, incredibly sharp at F8, all the way to the corners. The Rokinon's still got aberrations. All right, so which lens should you get then? If you're looking for the smallest, lightest, most compact package, get the Rokinon. If you need a true wide angle to ultra wide angle lens, get the Rokinon. If you want good image quality, but not great image quality, get the Rokinon. If you're shooting in low light, but not the lowest of light, get the Rokinon. If you don't mind manual focus, in, or prefer manual focus, get the Rokinon. If you need autofocus, get the Sigma. If you need to use it with a gimbal with manual focus, get the Sigma. If you need a wide angle, but not that wide of an angle, get the Sigma. If you want great to fantastic image quality, get the Sigma. If you don't mind having something that's a little bit bigger, get the Sigma. If you're shooting in the lowest of light, get the Sigma. Basically, these two lenses can be used in very similar but very different situations and it really depends on what you're using it for. So hopefully this video has been a good enough of a comparison with these two lenses to let you make the right decision for what you need. So hopefully this video did that and thanks for watching. If you haven't already hit the subscribe button, go ahead and hit that. Go ahead and leave me a like and we'll see you in the next video.